essential results from this trial are really the primary endpoint of all cause mortality or disabling stroke, which at two years was 4.4% for TAVR and 6.6% for surgery. Not statistically significant, but still trending strongly in favor of, of TAVR. And then we look at time in the cath lab or OR, something that really cost us money, statistically less time for TAVR than surgery. Time in the hospital, something that cost us money, statistically less for TAVR than surgery. Not listed on the slide is time in the ICU. Everybody that had surgery went to the ICU. Most people having TAVR went to a recovery room and had no ICU time. The median time was close to zero. And more patients with TAVR was discharged straight to home. Other important things on uh, Kaplan-Meier clinical event rates were disabling stroke and rehospitalization. Statistically more common in surgery than TAVR at year one. By year two, no longer statistically significant, but still strongly trending towards TAVR. Both stroke and rehospitalization, again, cost quite a bit of money. New pacemaker implantation was statistically in favor of surgery, both at one and two years, but acute kidney injury was statistically in favor of TAVR at one and two years, something that both brings on morbidity, risk of death, and cost for our uh, patients. For the health economic analysis, what we did was recreated two models to look at life years and quality of life year gained. We had two assumptions. One was an optimistic assumption that the increased survival from TAVR would go throughout the patient's lifetime. The other one was a pessimistic assumption and that as after year one, the survival would be no different between the two groups. We then extend this out using this early data beyond the patient's entire lifetime. If we use the optimistic assumption where the survival benefit from TAVR lasted, the patients would gain 0.32 life years and 0.57 quality adjusted life years. If we use the pessimistic assumption, patients would only gain 0.07 life years and 0.08 quality adjusted life years. So actually because TAVR lived longer, you gained more, but it would actually cost you a little bit more. So looking at TAVR and surgery through the, through the first 30 days, we see there's a 3.9K difference in US dollars, and by one year, there's a 4.3K difference in US dollars, with TAVI costing more than surgery. We can then use our two assumptions, both optimistic and pessimistic, to project this across the patient's lifetime and find that the difference in cost through the patient's lifetime varies from $5,500 to $12,500, with TAVR costing more than surgery. Because in the U.S. the willingness to pay level is $150,000, both of these fall well within the U.S. willingness to pay. Well, the health economic implications for Europe really depend on a couple of factors. One is each country's willingness to pay for quality of life you're saved. In the U.K., they're willing to pay 25,000 pounds for quality of life you're saved. And based on these models, we think we can keep this between two and 8,000 pounds in the U.K., that would make this uh, something that was cost effective for that country. We move to Germany, France, Italy, and the Netherlands, the willingness to pay for quality of life you're saved is 50,000 euros. And, and if we can keep this between four and 16,000 euros, which it appears that we can, this will be cost effective. The potential drivers for cost effectiveness in Europe are, are various. One is the procedure time and the length to stay in a real world setting. All countries have different uh, rates at which they send people home and different times they take to do this. We really spend money in the procedure room and in the ICU. If we can avoid those, we generally avoid cost. It also depends on the reimbursement structures and the treatment protocols in each individual country and country-specific interplay of admission, device cost, and adverse event cost. 